Double click on your internet connection icon on your desktop. This is a nice tool because you don't have to have an internet service provider account just to learn about the internet. My recommendation would be when you start to play with the internet, you spend some time here learning about the internet. For example, how you move around and what services are available out there. In this tool, I have a couple of options. Number one, I can explore the internet with several websites that have already been entered in for me. Or I can search the internet for different resources. In this example, let's go to the Microsoft World Wide Web page. On the Microsoft World Wide Web page, we have tons of information that you might find useful. Things such as technical support on a variety of our products, and even a little information on Microsoft TV. But let's not limit ourselves with the Microsoft World Wide Web page. Let's take a look at another one. As you can see, the simple interface will let you explore some popular internet sites, search for a specific location on the internet, or just simply learn more about how to navigate on the internet. The World Wide Web on the internet is rich with multimedia content. Microsoft Plus's Internet Explorer can help you access this information quickly and easily. Let's start the Internet Explorer now. First of all, with the Internet Explorer, you don't need to know what kind of server you're hitting out there on the net. You don't need to know whether or not it's an FTP server or a World Wide Web server or a Gopher server. The Internet Explorer makes an intelligent guess about what kind of server you're trying to reach and chooses the appropriate pro protocol. Watch. If I go up here and type in worldwideweb.microsoft.com, Internet Explorer knows that that was a World Wide Web site. Notice also that I haven't actually made a connection to the Internet yet. Now, the Internet Explorer includes a persistent cache that sits on your disk from one session to the next. Earlier today, I had already connected up to Microsoft's World Wide Web server. And because I haven't made a connection to the Internet yet, the World Wide Web server, or the Internet Explorer, simply fetched the data that I had looked at before. Very convenient, for instance, if you're surfing the web and you're sitting on an airplane. Let's try a site that I haven't tried yet today. Let's try, for instance, um, Times Pathfinder site. The first thing you'll see is that Microsoft, uh, the Internet Explorer pops up a window asking me to make a connection to the Internet. And I'll go and make my connection through the Microsoft network. Now, the Internet Explorer is dialing to the Microsoft network, to the Microsoft network's global TCP IP network.
Okay, Internet Explorer has finished downloading Time's Pathfinder page. This is an interesting page because Time Magazine lets me read all of their magazine content online from here. I might want to add this particular page to my favorites. So I go up here and I select Favorites and Add to Favorites. And it will pop up a dialog and ask me what I want to call this. And I'll just say Time Warner Pathfinder and click Add, and it gets added to my favorites list. The next time I go to select from that menu, I'll see Time Warner Pathfinder. I might also want to make a shortcut to this particular site. Microsoft Plus extends the Windows 95 shortcut functionality so that customers will be able to create shortcuts to favorite internet locations and then reach these locations with a single mouse click. To create a shortcut, I simply go over to File and choose Create Shortcut. Explorer tells me that there will be a shortcut to the current page placed on my desktop, and I click on OK. And if I minimize this page, you can see that there is this shortcut to the Pathfinder. Actually, I can go ahead and close this, and um, MSN will ask me if I want to disconnect, so I say yes, and it will disconnect from the network. The next time I want to use that page, I can simply double click on it, and it will behave like any other shortcut in Windows 95. This has some interesting implications. I can do things like, for instance, mail this shortcut to somebody else so that they can look at this page if they want to. Or I can store the shortcut in a directory somewhere. And actually, the Internet Explorer's favorites storage mechanism is to store the shortcuts in, um, or store favorites as shortcuts in a directory. And I can go ahead and create subdirectories of these shortcuts, and I can build trees of them and uh, share them with other folks and create cascading menus from them, and all the things that you'd be able to do with a file in Windows 95. So this is a very flexible and an efficient way um, to manage favorite sites on the internet. Another capability which the Internet Explorer supports is object linking and embedding. For instance, I can drag and drop a graphic from a web page onto my desktop. Here's how. If I grab the drag graphic like this and drag it out onto the desktop, I got a GIF file created from that web page on the desktop. Okay, let's return to how it is that the Microsoft Network and the Internet Explorer interact together because there's some interesting things that you can do there. First of all, if I start the Microsoft Network, I'm going to start up a TCP IP network connection here. And the Internet Explorer and the Microsoft Network will both share that TCP IP connection. Now the fact that this is a shared TCP IP connection makes some thing, interesting things possible. For instance, Microsoft Network content, which is considerably richer than most of the content on the network, can now be delivered to Internet customers. Let's have a look at my favorite places on the Microsoft Network as an example. If I click on Favorite Places, you'll see an icon which says Microsoft Encarta Intro Edition. Now this is an online version of Microsoft's Encarta Encyclopedia, which is normally delivered on CD-ROM. So if I click on this to open it up, we can have a look at it. And you can see what I mean by the rich content which is available on the Microsoft network versus that content which is normally available on the internet. Here's the splash screen. I'll click on Enter to get into Encarta. And it'll take a second while it brings up the first article. And here's Encarta. You can see that it looks quite a bit like the PC edition of Encarta. So if I go up here and click on Find, for instance, I can bring up a list of topics and look for something. I'm going to San Francisco next week, so why don't I have a look at what Encarta has about San Francisco in its database.
then I'll go ahead and click to find out what's there. Now, bear in mind that the content which is being delivered here is being delivered over a 14.4 modem, which is a pretty ordinary modem. And this is the kind of content that you would normally expect to find on a CD-ROM. And there's my article on San Francisco. The Microsoft Network also provides complete access to internet news groups. It also provides access to internet mail. And in addition to that, you can use the Internet Explorer from the Microsoft Network. So for instance, as I said earlier, the two, the Internet Explorer and the Microsoft Network, share the same TCP IP connection. 